So hi, everybody. Um, this is Ask the Sensei, um, the VO Dojo's monthly Q&A webinar. Um, I am Tish Hicks. I'm the Master Sensei of the VO Dojo here in Burbank, California. Um, we are joined by our amazing Techno Sensei, Dan Leonard, the Home Studio Master, who's here to answer all your questions tech and share other insights on all the other things he knows about voiceover. And um, we are very excited to have as our guest sensei today, um, my friend Thompson Howell, who is just one of the loveliest um, and most talented promo guys that there is. Um, June is kind of promo month in that uh, Promax, the big promo convention is happening right now, Thompson, right? Yeah. So Kind of made it a little theme. Uh, Thompson's here for the Q and A. JJ Jurgens, um, who is a fantastic um, uh, promo talent and promo director producer, um, is going to be our Fight Club guests uh, for our live LA Fight Club. So we thought we'd make a little theme of it. Um, and Thompson has been um, always one of the. Um, he was, he was an early, early dojo adopter. He's always been a <laughs> great friend of the dojo. So, um, yeah. So, um, Dan, why don't you introduce um, yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about you. And then, Thompson, we'll have you um, share a little bit more about yourself. And um, we'll jump in. All right. Well, thanks, Tish. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. And uh, if you have questions about home voiceover studio tech, I'm the guy to ask because the stuff you read in Facebook means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I will keep you confused. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. And Thompson, tell us a little bit about you. Ah, a little bit. Wow. Um, well, I've been uh, doing voiceover for about 30 years, uh, probably started in the early 90s when it sort of became more of a, a serious full-time thing. That was back in Chicago where I lived for a long time. And um, my career is, uh, I was a radio disc jockey in Chicago off and on uh, for many years as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, an actor and uh, everything just sort of came together in, in voiceover for me. And uh, my career has generally been a uh, a mix of commercial and uh, promo and trailer more recently and uh, and some narration and stuff like that. And, you know, a lot of bread and butter stuff in Chicago. And then I moved out to L.A. Uh, it's been, wow, it's October 2006. So that would be almost 13 years wow. uh, to pursue more promo work and uh, trailer stuff. And, uh, you know, it's just been, uh, you know, a, Careers are funny things. You, you ride the wave each and every day, each and every week, or each and every month. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm in a good place right now. And I'm happy mm -hmm. to be here. Excellent. Um, something that, is there anything that we'd be hearing right, right now? Hearing right now? Well, I just finished doing some promos for Cooking Channel. Uh, mm -hmm. There's some Documentary Now promos on IFC running now. Um, yeah, those are, the, those are the main things. Cool. But you, you'll know you know Thompson's voice when you hear it. <laughs> it's very good. Awesome. So, um, all right. It looks like everybody is here, and um, we uh, people have been checking in where they're calling from in the chat, and uh, we have one question. So uh, we'll start with that one. Um, this is our question and answer uh, webinar, so questions are the key thing there. Um, we, we can chat, we can ask each other questions, but um, we're also here for you. So um, uh, type those in and we will start um, with this first question. Um, can you talk about your early training? If you were 20 again, would you do anything differently? <laughs> Who are you addressing that to? Oh, yeah. anybody, anybody. No. We're, we're tossing, we're tossing the, the, the questions out. <laughs> Have at it, Dan, if you want. Mm -hmm. Law school. <laughs> you do law school? <laughs> oh, yeah, because that's a guarantee these days. <laughs> yeah, become a computer engineer or something. Like that. Yeah, really. Internet, internet technology. <laughs> um, no. Yeah, my, my early training, um, you know, I took my first voiceover class. I I think it was 1986. I was just out of Northwestern, where I went. Yeah. College got my acting degree there, and um, 
I had my interest in radio and I took my first voiceover class then and it was a, a class. Um, and I think if you're gonna, if you're exploring voiceover for the first time, any whatever area you think you might be interested in or all of them, take a class, a group setting is I think is for a beginner, a much better way to learn than doing one-on-one -on -one individual work with a coach. Coaching is great, but not if you're a beginner. I think the class, you get the benefit of objective learning you're watching other people work in the booth and subjective learning, you being in the booth, working on the mic. Um, and my experience has been having taught voiceover myself at a beginning level is that you're going to learn more watching other people do it. And that's going to help inform your, um, your uh, way of doing things, the way you're going to approach things when you're in the booth. So take a class. That, that's my early training. And, and since then it's been, you know, working with, um, uh, my friend uh, Maurice uh, Tobias, who's been very influential and uh, doing some of her seminars and, and workshops throughout the years. So, um, so you, you've been, you've been, you did your work, then you do your work and you continue to work on your work. <laughs> as, yeah, as, that's pretty much it. And, okay. and, and, you know, the way the business has changed so much uh, since, you know, the early nineties, I mean, technology and, and just the, the, the advertising and entertainment businesses uh, Mm -hmm. together or just the way things are done is so different um and you have to keep on top of that it isn't always easy uh, but you do need to devote time to not just keeping track of what's going on in the business but how that affects your job as a talent mm -hmm. yeah yeah and that that um that idea of amplifying what you can learn by learning together is the heart of the dojo like that's that's everything that we that we do here that it's always just you but you never do it alone and together we can do it even more powerfully in, in that focused way um yeah um if i were in my 20s again i would have done it while i was in college I would have I would have found this while I was in school training to be an actor because it took me about five years. It was about five years after I after I graduated from Northwestern. I happened upon it by a, f a friend who's a, a friend of ours who's a, a creative director said, "Hey, I've got these spots. You want to do them?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." And I left that session and everything that I had ever done as a performer, as an artist, my my training at Northwestern, the Shakespeare work that I'd been doing in regional theater, the improv I was doing at Second City, my opera training was like, "Boom! This is what I'm going to do." And then I also uh, sought out training and trained and trained and then. Um, prepared and, and was ready. So it's, if you want it, um, go, go get it. Um, yeah. And, and then you came in from, uh, radio as well, right? Yeah, no, I, I, I went to school for broadcasting and, uh, spent 15 years in the radio business. And, um, you know, I, I think coming from radio, I would have probably thought, like I said, I probably should have chosen another field, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you know, you, you know, you, you want to be able to make a living. Uh, mm. but, uh, you know, but it trained me for what I needed to do later on, which is, uh, you know, doing voiceover and stuff. So I would say if, if, you, if you're 20 and you do it all over again, I mean, look at how many choices and opportunities you have. And if this is your bliss and this is really what you want to do, see what, see what it's going to take. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it's a good ride. It's a good ride. Well, uh, when you get it, when you get it going. Yeah. Um, excellent. Um, Connor asks, is it possible to find promo auditions by reaching out yourself or only through agents and managers? If the latter, who are the best for promos? Uh, you know, mo my career started, I mean, like I said, such a long time ago, I came up through the talent agent and, uh, and now my manager uh, system where all my auditions come that way. Uh, I don't know on, on the peer to peer sites. I don't know if they do post promo auditions there. I don't think so, but I'm not certain. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think any. generally speaking though, you're going to find uh, most promo auditions coming through uh, agents um, and particularly agents in New York and Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. That's the heart of the, the entertainment and the advertising and the broadcasting uh, industries are in both of those big coastal cities. It's not that you can't see uh, promo auditions from Chicago, for example. Uh, I do see some through my Chicago agent uh, from time to time, but a lot of the bigger network stuff, um, major cable channel uh, auditions, uh, 
come through my agency either in New York or Los Angeles. Right. Well, and I think, I think the bigger question is uh, you need to understand you need to understand the nature of promo work, right? So big networks um, are promoting shows that it's like there's a lot at stake when you become the voice of some to promote something, right? And so there's a there's a machinery that you are fitting in and have to be um, arriving at at a pretty high caliber and be able to fit into the into the machinery, right? I mean, promo is about fitting into the production schedule and um, being able to deliver super fast and super consistently um, and being available. Um, so probably not something that, that people would just go like, hey, let's get a guy to do it, right? So if, you, if you're coming up through an agency, um, then there's a relationship and a, a I don't know. What do you think about that, Thompson? Well, I think they're, they're my, you know, um, part of the business changing is the way promos are produced and the way they sound and a variety of other things has changed, evolved over time. They're always, they always seem to be looking for newer talent. Um, and uh, the, um, but it's a relationship business. It's a people business mm -hmm. as most businesses are. And your agents or manager, whoever, uh, have developed the relationships with the, the buyers at the networks or the cable, cable uh, channels. And um, um, they, they leverage those relationships in order to get auditions. Um, and there's a trust factor involved, you know, I mean, when there's, when you've got a production on the line and a producer and wants to make sure the product he's, he or she is putting out is, is fantastic. They want to make sure the talent they hire is right for the job and can do the work you know, in a relatively timely fashion. Uh, it's not gonna, they can't take all day in the studio getting the right reads from you. They're gonna give you, you know, maybe within half an hour, I've got a session coming up in about an hour and a half for that's, you know, it's gonna be a half hour thing or at least it's scheduled for half an hour, but we'll get the work done more quickly than that. And if you're doing network stuff, lucky enough to get that, and that is super rare these days. Um, you're in and out and, you know, maybe two, three minutes sometimes, depending on what, what work they've got for you. Boom, because you know what you're doing, you're in, you're out, they can move on, they can edit the thing together, they can uh, put, it, uh, put it together quickly and, and get it on the air if they need to. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yes, so let's see. Um, and and the, the second part of that question, um, who are the best, I guess, agents and managers for, for um, promo, for, for, for promo? Or who's, who's known, who do you work with? I think that depends, you know, I'm, I'm with SBV here in Los Angeles and uh, CESD in New York and Stuart Talent in Chicago. Those are my agents. Um, mm -hmm. There are a, certainly a good handful of other, and this is my experience, you know, in my, my universe, uh, other agents in LA uh, who definitely have access to, to uh, promo work. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and the same in New York, uh, mm -hmm. it's not exclusive to just, just one agency. Um, but you know, CESD, DPN, SBV, uh, Abrams, uh, Abrams a yeah. little bit, uh, William Morris, uh, Endeavor. Um, yeah. it, it, there may be some more. Those are the ones that are coming to the top of my head. But there's, there tend to be what I'll call A-list agencies, um, uh, like there are A-list actors. And, and then there's some who don't have as large a footprint in the promo area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think I think if you're interested in it, then to you know look at the agency and see what their promo department looks like, right? Yeah, yeah you can. Most of them are going to have websites. You can go on there uh, and look at their roster and see do they even represent promos. Most of them are, even mm -hmm. if we don't have the biggest footprint in um, uh, in the area. But but uh, definitely go use the internet to your advantage and find out you know who who are the ones who are representing. Um, promo and uh where they might have an opening for someone like you you know mm -hmm. your voice print is it a match for their for their roster and is there an opening right um yeah um and then can you talk a little bit uh thompson about about how your managers work with your agents because it seems it seems like most people most people who have really um fully in gear um promo promo um, careers also have 
uh, managers. That's my observation. As a, as a general observation, I would say that's probably true. Um, mm -hmm. There is certainly a... Uh, We're calling it this hour. Like that. <laughs> um, there's cool. certainly a symbiotic relationship between your agent and your manager. They work together. You know, mm -hmm. agents tend to do more, and this is broadly speaking, um, agents are going to do more day-to-day -day kind of career management stuff. Uh, submitting you for auditions, submitting your demo, um, negotiating a contract when you get work. Managers typically have much, much, much smaller rosters of talent. Uh, and, and the managers uh, who represent voiceover anyway, tend to really, not exclusively, but they, they, they have a, a broader, um, or the, their focus is more on promo and trailer. Um, and because they have smaller rosters of talent, they can spend more time uh, developing that talent uh, and nurturing a career over a long period of time. Yeah. Uh, and so they're, they're more big picture people. They're looking at your career, you know, down the, how can we develop, develop it now and where is your career going to go? Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's, there are no black lines between agent and manager. Sometimes they're, they're working together. Mine work together very well. They each share relationships. Sometimes your agent has relationships that the manager doesn't and vice versa. Um, but everybody wants it to work because when you work, they get paid, <laughs> you know. <laughs> get paid. Um, and so it, 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 that's my experience uh, with, with my manager, Debbie Cope, and, and uh, with SBV and all my other agents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, who are some other um, managers? Um, ACM and well, there's ACM. Yeah, they're they're sort of newer to the the manager managerial game. Uh, mm -hmm. My manager Debbie Cope. Cope's been in a, it's probably the very first. Mm -hmm. um, she's been around a long time. Uh, Voexpress.com is is our, her website. Um, Paul Wintner uh, is is managing um, Wintner W I N T N E R. Um, he's been at it a long time. Uh, Jason Helsner used to work with, with Paul. He's gone out on his own. Mm -hmm. um, uh, am I forgetting? Marks, is that? J yeah, Jason Marks. Uh, who I don't know personally, but I know a lot of people who are represented by him and really, really, I uh, think he does a great job for them. Yeah. Yeah. It's really a team of people working together. You know, you've got your team and depending on where you're at in your career and what areas of voiceover you're working on, you may not need a manager. Uh, like I said, the managers tend to focus on promo trailer. Sure, mm -hmm. they represent for other things, but um, that tends to be because that's where personal relationships are important because trailer houses and, and promo houses are such a small universe of potential buyers. Um, it's good to have the personal relationships uh, and develop a, a trusting relationship between uh, a buyer and, and an agent or a manager. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, good, good, good. Uh, it seems like there's uh, several questions about um, how can you do, how can you do promo work if you're not in LA? Um, I think there's a couple of layers of that. Um, so in terms of doing the actual work, once you have the relationship, once you have the, the flow of the work, you can really do the work from anywhere. You just need to be available and on the, you know, being able to, um, to be in the, in the rhythm, right, of the work. <laughs> if you're on one coast and it, the work is from the other side and... Well, that's right. I mean, I, I had a... Uh, a session uh, was Monday morning for a cooking channel. It was 8 a.m. my time. Um, mm -hmm. I'm in L.A. Uh, they're in New York, so they, they already had their coffee, and I was just stumbling out of bed. Um, <laughs> not really. But, but, yeah, you have to be flexible. You can do the work from anywhere if you've got, <clears throat> excuse me, a good studio um, and, and, and broadcast quality equipment that you can, can work with. Dan can certainly tell you a lot more about that mm -hmm. but um but where you are is not as important as who who are you represented um mm -hmm. really 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 want to get strongly into promo uh you in there are probably exceptions but uh and i can think of one off uh, offhand my, my good friend uh, old friend pete stacker from chicago still based in chicago represented by Stuart talent in chicago uh he does have a manager but i think that i think Stuart Stuart is his only agent um, mm. they've, had, they've had a handshake agreement, I think, for a long time. Um, but generally speaking, you want to find a promo strong, promo heavy agent in L.A. and or New York. You know, I have both. 
uh, covers the bases. Um, that's, if, if you really want to get into it, that's what you really need. Now, mm -hmm. I can't speak as much about smaller regional agencies. Uh, like I said, Stuart in Chicago does get promo uh, material for me from time to time. There may be agencies in uh, Atlanta, for example, which has become yeah, a um, big production uh, hub, who may be getting a lot more of that kind of work, and I'm just not familiar with that. Right, right, right. Uh, Jeffrey Umberger was, was our guest uh, sensei oh, recently, and he talked about there being a lot of, a lot of promo opportunities in Atlanta because there's a lot of organizations that are, the broadcast organizations that are based there. Yeah, so, the whole community down there has grown so much. I mean, I lived in Atlanta for a year about 20 years ago, uh, mm -hmm. long story. But uh, <laughs> and the community was, you know, it's insular, kind of, we're, we're Atlanta. And this is just as, you know, ISDN was kind of new and all these other, you know, c connectivity like we're doing right now, Zoom was not even in anyone's radar. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's another reason you can work from anywhere is the, it's so easy to connect in real, with good real-time audio, Source Connect, IPDTL, ISDN, mm -hmm. which I still have, mm -hmm. or a, a fairly inexpensively, don't tell AT&T. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, where you are is not as important as how, who, who represents you and are you easily accessible with, with good audio quality. Right, right, right. Um, I think also that if you are interested in this work and you are in a smaller market, then sort of think about where where is where is something happening uh, that would need a, a promo announcer, right? So if there is a news station, they might need an affiliate voice. They might have someone in LA doing their affiliate voice, but it might be a way that you could get in. Um, in some ways, um, I know, I know, um, uh, Thompson, you just mentioned that you've come full circle in coming back to radio imaging, right? Mm -hmm which I think radio imaging, if promo, promo is, is, um, promo is uh, promoting something that's on TV or for an um, entertainment purveyor, right? I don't know what we're calling them these days. It's not just networks, it's not just channels. It's, right. um, uh, and trailers are promoting things that are film, right? Uh, movies, right? Then radio imaging is sort of promo for radio. Kind of, it's, 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 it's yeah, it's funny. I, I've recently come to radio imaging after spending so much time in the radio business. And when I got out of radio, uh, October 1st, 2006 was my last day. <laughs> That's um, specific. <laughs> and, and, and a few days after that, I moved out to LA. Wow. But I never pursued, Im pursued imaging work because I've got a lot of friends, we all know, who do a lot of that work. And, you know, there's only so much of it. And I'm going, well, what do I have to offer that I would get into that. You know, my, my, uh, at the time I was more focused on commercial and even not even so much a promo at the time when I got out of radio, mm -hmm. um, a uh, little bit, but, uh, my attention, my career was elsewhere, uh, and imaging and, and affiliate TV, affiliate work, voice of a TV station. That was all in a different universe. Mm -hmm. And it came to me re recently, almost by accident. Uh, my agent in New York, Nate, uh, reached out at C from CESD and said, I, I got some people who are looking for something a little different and they know who all the usual players are and they're all wonderful. Um, many of whom he represents, but they want to hear something different. And they somebody heard something on, I think it was your commercial demo or maybe it was your, your promo demo that they mm -hmm. liked and they want to try you on some stuff for the radio stage. I said, okay. Anyway. Um, and that that's panned out. So it's sort of starting that part of my career, you know, late in my, my overall career, but it's like a new, newer thing for me and I'm still learning it. Um, but it's fun and it's, it's unlike a lot of the other promo work you do, it's a regular monthly retainer income. You know, whatever mm -hmm. the station is paying you, they're paying you to do a certain amount of work and, and for, the, for the use of your voice uh, during the and, month they're paying you. And Kelly asked a question, can you explain a little bit more about what, what um, radio imaging is? Um, I, I always say it's in some ways it's like the things that identify the station, right? It's wave 94, da, 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 all jazz. And then, but it's also promoting things that are happening on the station, right? Or, or that the radio station is. Yeah. There's typically a, a tip. I don't know if anything's typical, typical anymore, but, and, and it's changing. You know, I even out here in LA, I hear some stations who still have a voice, you know, 
the main voice that is Annette telling you about a concert that's coming up or, or a contest and when to listen for your cue to call or whatever it is. Um, and, uh, and yet there are other, other stations that rely more on actualities, you know, drop-ins of listeners saying, Hey, I listen to kiss FM or whatever it is out here. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're a, a voice talent doing imaging work, it's uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on in Chicago and B96 in Chicago, you know, Chicago's new hit music, B96, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. That is typically, really, and there's plenty of female talent doing it as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and then say a little bit more also, um, and then we have a tech question for you, Dan, too. Um, say a little bit more about when, when you're doing promos, you get paid, it's, it's just that work, and that's it. There's no residuals. There's no other things. You do it, you get paid, you do it, you get paid, but you do a lot of it, right? That's why it's so lucrative. Um, it depends on what arena you're working in. If you're working for one of the broadcast networks, it's going to be a SAG-AFTRA union job. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, if you're on a, on a voicing a show uh, or shows on other networks, that's where the money, you know, where the where promo gets its reputation of, oh, you you mm-hmm. make a lot of money because frankly yeah, you get paid for the promo and you also get paid for the tags tonight mm-hmm. tomorrow saturday you know blah, 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 that, that all adds up you know you can you can do pretty well on a, on a fairly short session because mm-hmm. uh, all that that money adds up and if you're doing that on a regular basis for a show that's how the, uh, the income can increase if you're doing promo for the cable channels typically they're they're uh, buying you for a half hour session, maybe an hour, mm-hmm. but typically half hour, 15 minutes. I do some work for Disney. It's 15 minutes or half hour. And that's a set rate per time. You're not paid by mm-hmm. the work. You're paid by the time you're working. So in a, in a, in a, in a weird way, it, it pays not to be too efficient. <laughs> you know, <laughs> time to drag out. On the other hand, you don't want to be seen as someone who just drags on and on and on when we could have right. had it at take three and it's take 45 and you know, you're just trying to rack it up. <laughs> They're on. So <laughs> that's how you're paid. Network, you're paid one way. Cable, you're, you're paid differently. Right. And then on radio, you, you get a retainer for some. Radio years. imaging is yeah, a whole different beast, a whole different universe. There are agents like mine, uh, Nate and uh, CESD specializes in that. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're looking for certain things and uh, yeah, it's paid. It's usually monthly retainer. Mm-hmm. Monthly retainer. Cool, cool, cool. And um, Dan, can you uh, take Kelly's question about um, recommendations for Source Connect or IPDTL? Um, yeah, and, 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 and then, then yeah, wait, when when you start getting more work or getting it set up to get ready for work. That's a okay. that's really good. Uh, what? Yeah, I mean that's the essence of that question. And mm-hmm. you know, you never put the cart before the horse. And as I usually say, you don't buy great equipment to get work. You work to get great equipment. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, if it's a matter of source connect and IPT, IPDTL or IPDTL, as <laughs> uh, we call it, uh, these are very, very specific programs. Source Connect's a good one to have because you can use Source Connect now, which is free. Uh, if if you know you have the opportunity and you need to remote, remote uh, re- work remotely, yeah, that's that's a good one to have. The thing is, is you don't invest in those things until somebody asks you if you have it and they will hire you if you do uh, because it's not cheap. And every time you key that thing up, uh, you've got to be making money doing it. So otherwise it's just accumulating uh, long distance bills and uh, you know, your, 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 your monthly fee for that sort of thing. So make sure that you have got the work to support that particular uh, technology. And that said, you- go ahead. Oh, okay. Can you back up and explain exactly what Source Connect and IPTDTL and um, ISDN are and how you would use them in your setup? Right. Well, I- ISDN is a hopefully dying technology. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Thompson. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, Thompson wants it to go too because if somebody digs a hole in his front lawn and cuts his, his IPDTL or his, his, <laughs> his ISDN line, he's going to want to be able to have uh, his internet to uh, do that. Uh, ISDN is a digital service line uh, that allows you through a very expensive uh, uh, box to record remotely so that a studio somewhere that has the same unit on the other end can record you at full quality uh, from your home studio. 
uh, meaning that you'll be you're recording it live, which also means you can't do it from your, your living room. Uh, you've got to be able to do it from a really good sound, uh, uh, sound booth or a place that's properly treated. Uh, and, and Source Connect and IPDTL are internet based. Uh, they're not telephone based. Uh, they all go over copper wires anyway. <laughs> um, and uh, they are, uh, they are just, they are software you have on your computer that allows you to talk back and forth and record remotely in another studio. So, you know, that's where you're like, all right, can you do that one again? Can you do it a little bit slower? And they're hearing you in real time as you're saying it over your, your, over your audio chain. And that's, and that's what those are for. Yeah. Um, and they're not cheap. And again, there are inexpensive alternatives to that. Uh, Source Connect Now, which is free, works on an Opus codec. If it's a matter of you just recording, you know, at your home studio and they want to listen in, you know, there's, there's always the good old phone patch, or as I like to call it, okay, I'm ready on my end. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, don't, don't, be, don't be seduced by the hype of a lot of these things right now. If you're just a beginner, you, you, you don't want to have that stuff there. If someone says, I want to hire you and I need to record this you know, on, on such a regular basis, then you can get those sorts of things and be ready to have them. ISDN, I think, is going to be eventually phased out. I've been saying that for 10 years. Um, but eventually it will. And, and Source Connect and IPDTL and probably some other services will come online that will allow people to record uh, remotely. So. It's funny, Dan, I'd, I'd read recently somewhere in, anecdotally that perhaps the telcos were slightly reconsidering completely dumping ISDN. Have you heard anything like that? Is it, I, is it as drad that the end date seems to get kicked down the, down the line? Uh, well, it's, it's prohibitively expensive in a number of places. And as you were mentioning, I mean, you've got a great rate on it, but I, you know, I find that you have uh, regional discrimination of the ability to do this because it's cost prohibitive in certain locations. And uh, so therefore it's not fair. And I think it would be nice if, you know, producers who are very, very, you know, at a good, comfortable pace, are now adjusting to using uh, some of these alternative systems. And now yeah. you will see, you know, do you have ISDN or Source Connect? Right. Which is which is great, meaning that and, you don't have to invest in a codec box and stuff. Yeah, it's really getting the, 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 the in LA. There's such a density of ISDN because it's used by the studios, production houses, the networks. I mean, to getting them to sort of rethink things um, is either going to be at and say, we're absolutely pulling the plug. You're going to have to figure out something else. Um, but yeah, eventually, I mean, I'm paying 60 bucks a month. I'm a, it's a legacy account, I know. And I, <laughs> a friend uh, in Cincinnati told me once he was paying a thousand wow. a month for the same service. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, Chicago is probably a little bit more than that. It's yeah. crazy. So yeah, eventually it's going to disappear. And Source Connect is is more in the $69, like $100 range, right? Uh, it depends on what you get because mm -hmm. there's a, t a couple of different levels of service that you can get and you really don't need heavy duty stuff. Now, someone like Thompson, who is going to be, you know, doing stuff live on a consistent basis day after day, you're going to want to have a lot of the services that those provide and you, you want it to be really, really reliable. And I do, um, I have both source connect. I've got source connect, uh, um, uh, standard and IPDTL. Mm -hmm. and, and it's funny. I have friends who use those two sources exclusively, partly because they don't have ISDN, but mm -hmm. partly because the clients they work with use those technologies. Yeah. I rarely use them. You know, I'm either recording and uploading audio uh, by, by FTP to a client, which I'll do in a little while, mm -hmm. or it's uh, over ISDN. Um, right. When you're doing a live session. Every, everyone, your workflow can, can vary from person to person and depending on the work you're doing. Right. Yeah. And so you have to determine what work it is you're going to be doing before you invest in those particular technologies. One doesn't lead to the other, generally. Right, right. And like everything, like everything in your, in your, um, technical side of your voiceover business there is you can think of it as an evolution right what do you need now what will you need and as as you know dan said earn the money to to get the equipment so it will it just think of it as an evolution you don't have to go out and get everything set up before you're making money let the money that you're making um and the the work that you're doing right because if you happen if you happen upon 
that, you know, the helicopter comes and you are that new, new voice and someone wants you, then, you know, then you can go like, oh, okay, well, what do I need? Right. Um, and it's not, it doesn't take long to get one of those services. Right. Exactly. And there's people like Dan who can go like, oh, hold on a second. Right. We'll, we'll get you set up. Yeah. So, you know, always, always, uh, the thing, yeah, you always want to be um, thinking, thinking ahead, but taking action now, Right. <laughs> thinking ahead, what could I need, but don't worry about it until you need it, right? Right, and know know where the resource is, right? Where you get it from. Yeah, yeah. People like Dan can can help you out, but my experience is really it doesn't take a lot these days. It used to be you needed to invest tons and tons of money to have the best, and now Oops. I'm working with a, an iMac here, but you can work on a, on a laptop or with the software. Or yeah, it's a it's, good audio editor. It doesn't, a good microphone, a good interface, and a good clean space to record in. That's probably the most important thing you can invest in. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to get to, uh, wait, whose who's great question was it? Uh, Martin. Martin had a great question that talks about... Um, I've read if you're interested in getting into promo, it's best to go into commercial and produce a commercial demo first, then branch into promo. Do you agree that this is a good strategy or is there another path that might be more desirable to follow? Um, from my perspective, um, this thing that we were just talking about, an evolution of an evolution of your technical stuff, right? From my perspective and how we approach things here at the dojo is I think there's also an evolution to your voiceover work and finding your way into the niche, right? None of voiceover is... None of voiceover is rocket science. It's 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 talking, right? It's being relaxed. It's have it's it's understanding. I mean, there's a lot to it, but ultimately, we're talking into a microphone, right? Now, of the of the genres that there are, very promo internet today is uh, yeah the the internet is a little wobbly. Um, sorry about that. Um, my back, you guys back. Um, okay, um, you know, of of the genres of voiceover, I think promo has uh, the most complexity, like the closer to rocket science, right? Now, one of the things I love about Thompson is that um, um, Thompson, in addition to being an extremely talented uh, performer and voiceover actor, is also a um, skilled um, organist. He plays the organ. And I think it's very, very, um, um, it's, a, it's a great metaphor for what needs to happen when you're doing promo, right? Because when you're playing the organ, you, you're responsible for keeping the energy flowing, right? You have to keep the air flowing and promo requires a certain amount of just steady on this. If you listen carefully, there's all sorts of different kinds of promo, but they all, they all have this steady on that you have to maintain and find the variations within it. When you're playing the organ, you have two keyboards and you're playing melody with your feet and, you know, and, and your tune page. Like all of these things have to be happening at once. And I think that's, so in terms of where do you begin, I think in general, starting with a commercial demo, starting with a commercial demo, gives you the opportunity to understand yourself and understand what you're bringing to these voiceover parties. So starting there is a great foundation. Plus any, anyone you're going to be working with, um, if you can say, oh, and I also have a commercial demo, I also do that work, you're just opening up the range of your portfolio for anyone who, who you're going to bring onto your team, right? An agency. Oh, I do commercial and promo and da da da, da right? Um, so I think, I think that's a great way to think about it. A commercial demo is important because it allows you to know yourself in this realm really well and opens up that, that part of the business. Now, certain voices lend themselves to moving to this genre of of promo it's it's much different it's not i mean thompson happens to have a fantastic sort of in a worldy voice but it's not just that anymore um so so then do, do does your voice have the qualities that lend itself to that work um this in metaphor i think about like you can have a horse and then you can have a quarter horse uh, that's good for doing barrel racing 
right? Or you can have a thoroughbred that's good for running long distances, right? So also figuring out where your voice lies. So um, that's sort of my take on that. How about you guys? What do you think? Uh, I, I, yeah, I think uh, commercial, <clears throat> here's the voiceover pyramid, okay? It's on the camera. So it's kind of like this, and you, I'd have to draw a picture, but it's, uh, <laughs> you know, there's the bottom, it's very wide. There's a lot of different types of work there. And then you scoop up a little bit and then there's sort of commercial in the middle range. And then promo is a higher than that. Anyway, the higher up the pyramid you get, the less space there is, the less work there is. Commercial has always been sort of a gateway to the business because frankly, there's a lot more commercial work out there than there is promo work. There's a lot of promo work, but there's, there's you know, uh, just a huge amount of, of commercial work. And, uh, an agent, uh, sort of as you were uh, referring to a little bit, Tish, they want to hear your promo chops, uh, your your commercial chops. Mm -hmm. That's what's really going to get you. There are exceptions, but generally, that's what's your your entry level. I'm new to voiceover. Here's my commercial demo. It's your calling. Mm -hmm. I also think another another metaphor that I use uh, that I talk about is if you think about it, getting your commercial demo done is like getting your MD, right? We've all gone to medical school. We know we can handle kind of all of those situations. And then each genre becomes a bit of a specialty, right? Um, you can you you can be a doctor and then you can specialize in surgery, you can specialize in neurosurgery, you can specialize in pediatric neurosurgery with neonatal seizure disorders especially right so you can go into it i think that's another interesting way to to think about it yeah, yeah. you have you have your sorry Dan, you have yeah. you have your entryway with commercial and then yeah you may find you are especially these days where in commercial they want a very very real sound you know I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a real person i'm talking to you but i don't sound like a regular guy enough sometimes so um <laughs> And it's just me talking. So you'll find, you know, your commercial work may, may go down and you may gravitate more towards uh, promo. You know, you may find you're more comfortable there um, or, or, or you're used more in that genre. You know, I've been fortunate with some, uh, some trailer uh, campaigns recently. That's nice, but rare, mm -hmm. uh, generally speaking. But the commercial, uh, commercial is always the baseline for, for just about everyone. And then you branch off into into the other areas if you're suited to them and if, if an agent thinks they can sell you. Right. right. And yeah. what was your thoughts on? Well, I, you know, I, I think to just limit yourself to doing commercials or promo, of course, is not exactly what you're going to find yourself doing because commercials really are, you know, for the entire voice of our marketplace is about that much. So that's much higher up on the pyramid where the majority of work is really is in e-learning, uh, and, and, you know, IVR and, uh, you know, animation and games are now very big. Still, they are, they are seem to be inhabited by a fairly small cadre of highly skilled professionals who do this type of stuff and working your way up there takes time, talent, effort, uh, and that sort of thing. So if you're trying to pursue commercial work, uh, you know, right off the bat, I would say stock up on ramen noodles. And uh, try to get as much, you know, e-learning work and narration work as you can. Sure. Uh, I know there's a lot of people doing audio books, uh, how they make a living doing it. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I guess they don't sleep or eat. Uh, and, um, but there's so much opportunity in markets and, and genres that we may not have even, have, have even considered. And the key to really to creating your success is to find your niche and audition for all sorts of different things and see what you get hired for and see where where your talent really lies. And if it's in commercial, if it's in conversational type of stuff, go for it. If it's, if it's in promo and you think you can do that kind of stuff, study it, work with the best people out there and, 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 try, and try and pursue that based on the advice they give you on how to pursue that type of work like Thompson is doing today. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, but don't limit yourself to any one particular thing. You've got to, I, I, I had an uncle who, who is an educator and when I went back to school, he gave me this great metaphor. He says, it's great to go back to school because you got to walk down this long hallway with all these doorways in it. And unless you walk down the hallway, and open all the different doors, you're not gonna know what opportunities you're gonna find. So examine all possibilities. Don't narrow yourself down at the beginning and say, I wanna do a promo. It's like, well, 
if you're going to do promo, you're going to get led to doing promo somehow, but you've got to investigate all of these different yeah. genres and yeah. find what it is that you really excel at because there's plenty of work out there for everybody. Yeah. Right. It, you know, commercial promo and everything else sort of get the, the, um, you know, sort of the, the sexy realm of voiceover. And then there's the other more bread and butter stuff that you thought up where there's probably, yeah, a lot more of that work. Um, uh, that may not get the attention it, it it deserves, but it probably should because you can do well at it if you're working regularly. Right, and if you're doing this for yeah, if you're doing this for attention, then I you know I'd say there's other things you could be doing. Yeah, <laughs> you know it's you've got to make a living, you got to feed your family, so you do um, what you got to do. Yeah, so there's this this is this is a great uh, segue to uh, another question. Um, Kelly asked, talk about, uh, can you talk about your jump and transitioning from part-time to full-time VO? Is there anything you recommend having in place first or steps that made you feel secure about making the leap? Um, so uh, I think in all of, in all of this, um, okay, so first of all, um, I made the leap 20 years ago, so it's a whole another ball game now in some ways in some ways it's a whole nother ball game um so the things so so that that's one thing but um you know what i think the more that you can look at all of this in 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 voiceover it's an art form and it's um it's your business too right so you need to develop your artistic skills and be able to do this work and find the nuances within the nuances and know the difference between the genres and all of that. Um, and you need to have a really entrepreneurial mindset. So in some ways, um, you can also think of this like I'm starting my lemonade stand or I'm starting my shoe shop or I'm starting my car washing thing, right? I am starting my business. So when you're starting your business, you wish for it to be like, yeah, um, just getting returns and returns and returns, but more often than not, there's a, a, um, a transitional. You know, there's a transitional couple of years where you're working towards that, and then it's something that you have to do. When I was coming up, um, my husband and I um, had a small graphic design firm, which, as I look in retrospect, was all great because we had marketing mindset, so that all applied to to voiceover. Right. But I, we ran that. And then, you know, then when the campaign started coming and the, <laughs> the, the money to cover everything, we were able to segue, segue out of that. So I think it's, it's really having a mindset that this isn't going to be um, something that happens instantaneously. Another thing that I talk about is um, uh, <laughs> you know, gestating a child, right? Gestating a baby. You get the, you conceive this idea then you build your skills, you gestate it, and then you birth this infant, you get your demos, you start getting it in the world. But you wouldn't expect your baby to be like, all right, baby, let's pay the mortgage now. I mean, like maybe in LA, you get your baby on the front, but not everybody does that. So, so you also have to think of like that development. So when, um, I think when you make the transition is when do you have strong working relationships with either clients or agents or ideally both. Um, how much, how much, and how do you know how much you need to sustain yourself? Um, uh, I would say it'd probably be wise uh, to have a little cushion because as Thompson says, no matter where you are in this industry, there's times when it's like, woohoo. And there's times where it's like, Ha-ha. Um, for everybody, even at the t even at the toppy toppest, yep. um, which is not a word, but it's it's the nature it's the nature of the beast. So um, it's sort of a personal thing. And then I think it's also um, how much do you love it? <laughs> and when you love something, you'll do whatever you need to do for it, right? Um, you need to know when you're in a bad relationship. So if this isn't for you, you need to know if it's a bad relationship. But, um, and then, um, you know, when you love something, you go, you go through what you need to do and keep the, keep the vision of what's possible going. I don't know if that's remotely um, tangible in terms of what we're talking about. Any, any other insights? I mean. Um, I, yeah, I think you sort of hit it on the head. I mean, uh, Careers are funny things. You've got your 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 feasts and your famines and the hills and valleys and you know 
use the metaphor you want. Um, but it's not like one day I decide I'm going to do this. And every day after that, you're making, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a week or something like that. Um, which is, I think the grand fantasy people have, people who are not in divorce, people who are thinking getting into voiceover have, Oh, I can work from home and do all this stuff. Yes, yes, yes. And I can make, Tons and tons, millions of dollars a year? No, it's probably not going to happen. Uh, the business is very different now. And it's not to be discouraging, but you have to recognize that there are in those lean times, and you do want to have a backup um, savings. You know, Don't spend all, all that, that nice class A national commercial money right. tomorrow. Put some of it away. Um, but I also think there's power in choosing to do it. Um, you know, there was a period where I got into voiceover. I was still in radio. And then voiceover would be going along and I'd sort of get out of radio because I sort of felt that way. And then so there were some lean periods and I'd get back in, do some part-time work. And finally, you know, I finally said, that's it. I'm, I'm moving to LA. We're doing it absolutely full-time, no in and out, in and out. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the, the, the power of choosing, making a decision, you know, you're for yourself rather than letting circumstances dictate what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. I think that's an important distinction. So you want to do it. Um, you, you're going to, you're going to put in the training. You're going to, you're going to work your way up to a demo and you have to realize, yeah, you you might have a side, a side job, a survival job, you know, um, to, to help um, your passion for what you really want to do. Yeah. And I think, I think, I think that, that what, what Thompson just said about you gotta, you've got to make the decision at some point and the more you can go after this, if, you know, people say this to actors all the time. If this were the only way that you would be making money, what all would y'all be doing, right? What, what would you do if this was exactly, you know, this was the only way that you could make income? Um, so I think that there's a point where you, you find the balance of that, right? Um, yeah. I want to finish with one question and uh, real quick um, that I think is maybe we should have started with. Um, what are the qualities that what are the qualities that make a good promo voice or lend themselves to um, lend themselves to. Um, to the well. <laughs> Go for it, Dan. Yeah. No, what are the qualities? The qualities are, it's, it's, it's a very intangible thing because everybody hears things differently. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, there's, there's always this thing about Don LaFontaine, my, my, uh, my, my uh, VOBS partner, George Wooden used to be his engineer. And everyone was like, what are you putting in Don's studio to make him sound so great? And he goes, Don LaFontaine. <laughs> the, guy, the guy would just sound great on anything. He just had a naturally good voice and a good cadence. And it's not so much about voice quality because just about all of us can really, can really do that, that radio voice, you know, that sort of thing. If that's really what they're looking for, because that's not what they're looking for. As Thompson mm -hmm. will tell you, mm -hmm. there's a there's certain quality in your ability to, to act and be able to do things in a certain way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if everybody says you have a great voice, it's not because you're really pushing your voice. It's because you just have a pleasant voice and a good way of talking. And, and I know that's what Thompson does. And, uh, you know, there's a certain projection to it uh, that you have to learn. So, Thompson, what do you think about that? Yeah. No, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, it's not about, you know, uh, you, and you can do a lot of research online, listen to old, you know, TV mm. programs from the 70s and 80s the ernie anderson's on abc and the cougar danny dark on nbc and you know uh, uh chuck uh forgetting his name, riley chuck riley on cbs i mean this is the old guys with the big boomy voices and they were telling you what you're gonna watch come hell or high water um it's way not like that these days you don't have, need to have i mean i have an okay voice still <clears throat> tired right now but uh, you don't need to have an amazingly big boomy voice to do promos um I let the microphone do the work, you know, and I can talk like this if I have my trailer work and I can do talk very quietly, but it comes out when it's surrounded by all the surround design and so on and so forth. Same is true with promo. The important thing is it's all storytelling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in a promo, it's a short story. You know, you got 30 seconds and you're not even all of that 30 seconds. You maybe got three, four, five, maybe lines and that, you know, blah, blah. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. But there is a structure. There is a structure. And part of your training about learning promo to keep that energy moving is knowing the structure and, 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 and how to work each line 
in just mm-hmm. the right way. So you come out, wow, that 30 seconds went, if it's a good promo, yeah. went by really quickly. But it's all storytelling and learning how to take your storytelling ability and apply the skill you need to do it in that short amount of time. is Right. It's the, condens- it's the con- con- condensation of it. It's condensing it. Um, which at the dojo, we talk about a, a corporate narration might be like a big pot of um, uh, vegetable stock and a promo is like a bullion cube. That it, we, have, we have 16 words to take you on this whole journey of this movie that no one has seen yet. But my job is to make you want to come. Right. So, so I, think, I think there's, um, does your voice cut through? Does your voice grab me? And what can you do within, with, it, with your voice? Can you, while sustaining that energy, find the nuances within the nuances to make the storytelling come vibrantly alive and pull me in? There's so many jobs that you're doing in, in this tiny, tiny thing. And then each, you know, there's going to be different promos for different things that need different voices, right? That Thompson's not going to be getting the Nick Jr. ones, right? <laughs> He's not. <laughs> I mean, maybe there's probably something on, there's something on Nick Jr. that would have his flavor. So, um, well, No one's right for every job. Right, exactly. You're, you're not right for everything. No one is. Uh, and, you, and, and part of, kind of what we were talking about earlier is what's your, not your niche, but what's, what's the, the ballpark you play in generally? What's your, your, your wheelhouse? You do a little over here, you do a little over here, but the stuff that's outside the frame is probably better suited to other people, you know, mm-hmm. but you can know your voice print and what it's, it's your signature sound and what it's probably best suited for. And you can have some variety within that, but it's, uh, but the, you have to know, the stuff that's probably not best for you. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you don't decide that, you know, if your agent sends you some stuff for Nick Jr., do it. They must've oh, heard yeah. something. <laughs> exactly. They're throwing stuff up against the wall and they want to hear something different. You yeah. never know. Uh, don't, don't, don't take yourself out of contention for something that you yeah. might be good for that you just don't know. Yeah. Well, it's just about 11 o'clock. So I'm going to wrap up um, and, and close out and tell you guys about what's coming up next. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, in terms of um, keeping in touch with the dojo, www.thevodojo.com. Um, as I said, we have um, our, our working pro work uh, workouts, the VO Dojo Pro Fight Club coming up. Uh, JJ Jurgens is our guest live. Um, uh, in LA, um, check out that. And if you're just new to, if you're just new to voiceover, um, our summer of VO, um, uh, free workshop is coming up, um, uh, next week, next Wednesday, and that'll lead to a six week workshop. Um, Dan, how do people keep in touch with you? Uh, two ways. Uh, easiest way is to go to my, uh, website, homevoiceoverstudio.com. Uh, and click the contact me button and uh, and also watch voiceover body shop on Monday nights. Mm-hmm. Excellent. And Thompson, um, what is your website? If people want to see more. Yeah, of it's uh, I'm going to be, hopefully it's going to be undergoing a bit of a transformation uh, soon, but right now, Thompson Howell.com. Yeah. The demos and a little bit about me uh, are up there and you can contact me, go to the contact page and, and uh, reach out if you want. Yeah, excellent. Well, I hope you have a good rest of Promax, and thank you so much for joining us. And thank ha- you for having me. Have a good and um, yeah, thank you all. We do this the first Wednesday of the month. Although I think we're going to skip July because the first Wednesday is usually like Fourth of July. So we'll see you back here in August. But um, thanks for being here, and uh, we will see you next time. And I'll uh, answer a few questions uh, offline. But thanks, everybody. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Thanks, Tom. See you guys soon.